the sun releases about 380 septillion watts of energy every second. That's more than a million times more than the Earth uses in a year every second. It does this by converting 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium 60 times a minute over and over again. Imagine what a Type II civilization could do with all that juice. The Kardashev scale was developed in 1964 by the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev as a means to measure the rate of advancement that any given civilization has acquired. It does this primarily by examining the amount of energy that that civilization is able to utilize. Initially, there were only three levels to the scale, but that number has since risen to five as standard, or seven by some counts. A Type I civilization can harness all of the energy of its home planet. Type II can harness the energy of its entire planetary system, for Type III it's their entire galaxy, with Type IV it's the universe, and a Type V civilization can harness all of the energy of every universe, assuming a multiverse. For extended versions, there's also Type VI, which basically has godlike capabilities, and Type Zero at the other end, which hasn't yet mastered even its own planet. According to most estimations, humanity currently ranks at a modest 0.7 on the Kardashev scale. If humanity were to accomplish a Type II level of advancement, they would first have to have all the capabilities of a Type I. This means that we would have full control over our home planet, Earth. We'd be producing enough energy from wind, thermal, hydro, and every other renewable energy solution available, to the point that we wouldn't need fossil fuels anymore. We'd also be able to fully utilize all of the solar energy that currently reaches our planet from the sun. It'd be more than just harvesting power sources, though. A Type I society would have complete planetary control, meaning it could predict and manipulate all weather patterns, including rain, wind, and cloud coverage, as well as controlling specific natural disasters like earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. It's also expected that, by the time we reach Type I status, we'll have expanded into floating cities on the ocean. Estimates vary as to how long it'll take us to complete Type I, but the physicist Michio Kaku has predicted it'll take another 100 to 200 years. The trademark of a Type II civilization, the one we're most interested in today, isn't that it can control its home planet, but that it can fully harness the energy from its home star. In our case, that's the Sun. If humanity was a Type II civilization, it would be taking all of the energy the Sun produces, more than 38,000 septillion watts per second, and using it all for its own needs. Quite how a civilization would go about doing this is a mystery to modern science, but there are some ideas, the most famous of which being the Dyson Sphere. A Dyson Sphere is a structure that somehow encircles the Sun and absorbs all of the energy released by it. That energy is then somehow stored with maximum efficiency, before being transferred elsewhere for use, again with maximum efficiency. At this stage, humanity will most likely have spread out all across the solar system, so splitting the untold solar power between Earth, Mars, the asteroid belt, the moons of Jupiter, and everywhere else would be a massive undertaking. The Dyson Sphere itself, however, might also be fully habitable. At the time of its completion, it would most likely be the most massive structure humanity had ever built until that point, and easily big enough for some humans, like the technicians trained to run it, to live actually on or in it. If that were the case, then anyone listing the Dyson Sphere as their primary address would have a unique, extremely close, and perhaps quite unsettling view of the Sun. A Dyson Sphere shouldn't represent a health risk to a Type II civilization, though. By the time humanity becomes advanced enough to build something like this, we should have worked out and sidestepped all the dangers involved, which means we'd have shielded ourselves from the otherwise intense radiation and might even be able to look at the sun up close without damaging our eyes, maybe through some solar-grade windows or specialist goggles. But why would we ever want or need such a high level of control or such an incredible amount of energy? In some variations of the Dyson Sphere idea, it might be that this immense piece of machinery could actually serve to lengthen the lifetime of the Sun, buying Earth and the solar system specifically more time before our star goes red giant. For Freeman Dyson, though, the mind behind the sphere, it's more simply a natural progression for any spacefaring civilization. Any alien society that continues to advance and settle on other planets would need to consume greater and greater amounts of energy until its home star becomes the only source in its planetary system which offers enough. The opportunities available to a civilization at this stage, though, would be incredible to today's mind. Not only would we have spread out across the solar system, but we'd have likely mastered all of its many environments, too. Getting to and living on Mars would be easy. 
exploring the subsurface oceans believed to exist on places like Europa and Enceladus would be a breeze. We'd be able to build working colonies on any solar system body we wanted to. Our spaceships at this point would be so much more improved as well. Utilizing possible technologies such as laser ion engines or nuclear fusion itself to give us infinitely faster access from Mercury to maybe even the Oort cloud. And not only would we have all of that, but it would also be much more difficult to kill us off. The destruction of humanity would be a lot harder to achieve. In fact, if we were a Type 2 civilization, there'd be very little currently known to or suspected by science that could wipe us out. Asteroid impacts, which we're now unable to prevent, for example, would be easy to handle. At Type 2, we could disintegrate an oncoming rock, or potentially even move the Earth, or whichever planet we're on at the time, out of its path. In general, though, for anything to threaten the whole of humanity, it would now have to threaten the whole of the solar system. So one asteroid heading for one planet wouldn't spell the doom it does now. In a worst-case scenario, humans would just evacuate that planet before the impact happened. We wouldn't be invincible, though. There would still be some doomsday eventualities, like the appearance of a black hole nearby or universe-wide vacuum decay, which we'd still have no hope about running. Plus, war would remain a viable threat, either between ourselves or against some other spacefaring civilization. It's thought a Type 2 society would still operate governments, to manage things like trade, communication, or conflicts between the various planets, moons, and asteroids in a star system. There could still be competition and rivalry between these worlds, despite them all being united by the Dyson Sphere tasked to power them. And there'd still be a potentially dangerous next frontier to aim for and work towards, interstellar travel. According to the Kardashev scale, the next move for a Type 2 civilization would be to expand into other star systems, in a bid to reach Type 3. In our case, this would mean heading for Alpha Centauri, a three-star system that's 4.3 light-years away from us, and colonizing it in the same way as, by then, we would have already done with the next solar system. And from Alpha Centauri, it'd be on to the next star system, as humanity spreads out across the galaxy, seemingly becoming more and more indestructible as it does so. Before any of this becomes possible, however, we must first become a Type 2 civilization. As is widely reported and commented on, the current generation appears to exist at a very precarious time in human history. It holds the power to save this planet Earth or destroy it, and what we choose to do with that power will make or break our future. The Kardashev scale can seem like a set, even predetermined pathway, but it's the choices a civilization makes which determine how its future unfolds. And that's what would happen if humanity were a Type 2 civilization. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.